worship at Peace Lutheran Church and beyond, uh, since we are recording and, and on the internet as well. Welcome to you, however you're able to participate in worship today, uh, whether you're in person, whether you're on Zoom, whether you're participating um, later on YouTube, it's a good day for us to be reminded yet again how deeply loved we are by a God who is present among us and how we have the opportunity then to share that same love with the world around us. In these days, um, that work, that privilege becomes ever more important that uh, God's love be shared and made real in our world. So glad we could worship together today. This is the fourth Sunday in the season of Advent. Um, so let us light the Advent wreath. If I speak in tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and have all faith, but do not have love, and if I give away all my possessions, but do not have love, love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Today we light a candle of love. Christ is near. We carry that love with us.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that binds us, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Make sure that... Make sure you take home with you this blue, appropriately blue for Advent announcement sheet um, so that you have all the information of ministries, opportunities, things in this season um, through this congregation. Make sure you note this. Uh, just want to point out the silent auction for Bishop Gonya's photography. Um, we'll go through the end of the month, but... Don't wait, you know, you may not want to wait till the last minute and start putting those bids in. Um, it's a silent auction out there because everybody else might be thinking the same thing and you could lose out. So let's just see how, how much we can get for uh, ELC World Hunger in the meantime. And I do want to point out uh, this Friday, believe it or not, is Christmas Eve. Um, two worship services here in in person, uh, four o'clock and seven o'clock. Four o'clock is more more family, children oriented. Seven o'clock is um, less so. That's they're, they're, other than that, they're basically the same. You have two opportunities plus Christmas Day, another opportunity for Christmas worship. Uh, Christmas Day at ten Saturday. Um, note those, and hopefully. Um, we won't have to deal with, well, hopefully we do have to deal with overflow. What am I saying? I hope we have a real problem with overflow. Um, and we will deal with that uh, because we are still limited in our spacing in here. Um, but we've got some contingency plans for uh, out in the narthex. We'll do what we have to do. If you want to worship in person, we will do everything we can to make that safe. Um, there is a Zoom and online opportunity. I think it's at, Sandy, is that the four o'clock that's going to be Zoom? I don't know where. Okay, she's teching. Is four o'clock the one that's going to be on Zoom Christmas Eve? Yeah. Okay. Four o'clock will be on Zoom if, if you're not comfortable in person. Let the word of God be proclaimed among us. Good morning. Our first reading is from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5a. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God and they shall live secure. For now, he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. Okay. Our second lesson this morning comes from Hebrews chapter 10, 5 through 10. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, see, God, I have come to do your will, O God. 
in the scroll of the book, it is written of me. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in off sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I'm discovering that this text, the Magnificat, that has inspired so many uh, songs and hymns and poems and uh, spiritual insights, and I've, I've found I'm discovering that this text is a little problematic, actually. This Magnificat, which, which Mary sings in response to Elizabeth's greeting can be difficult, not because it isn't beautiful, because it most certainly is, and not because it isn't inspiring, because it most certainly is, but I think it can be challenging, at least I'm finding it challenging sometimes, because it is so different than the reality we experience. We hear these, these words of hope and trust and optimism pouring forth from the, from the soul, the depths of Mary's soul. And they're so different 
than what we know and what we experience day by day. The Magnificat ends up sometimes being more of a fairy tale than a description of real life. Here, here she is, Mary, this, this young, probably young teenage girl, poor, unmarried, and pregnant. And in those days, every one of those descriptors will lower her status in her community. And when word gets out that she is pregnant and she is not married, she will be shamed, she'll be uh, humiliated, she will be shunned, she may be banished. It's possible she legally she could be stoned to death. And yet she chooses, instead of hiding in shame, she chooses to trust this message given to her by an angel. Who's going to believe her? Everyone else would just push that aside as a bad dream or something and figure out how they're going to deal with this life dilemma. But she runs to Elizabeth's house to share what she considers to be good news. And Elizabeth not only doesn't shame her, but Elizabeth also thinks it's good news. They're probably the only two people right now at the point of this text that consider this to be good news at all. Mary's going to have a lifetime of difficulty as a result of this. And naive Mary young, idealistic, the life of trouble facing her just sings. How wonderful God is. The promises God has made, God is, has kept all those promises, she sings. The powerful have been knocked down. The powerful that oppress us have been knocked down, and those that, that are poor and the women and the, those that are cast off are raised up. The mighty God has done such wonderful things. Holy God. She's singing with a life of difficulty coming her way. <laughs> oh, dear, sweet little Mary. You sing this as if it had already happened. Oh, look around you, dear, sweet child. That's not the way things are at all. The powerful are still controlling everything. They're still abusing their power at the expense of the poor and the lowly and the hungry and women. The hungry are still hungry. The victimized are still helpless. Those in positions of power hold on to it. It's true before you sang this song. It's true while you're singing this song. And it's true since you've been singing this song. Why don't you see reality, Mary? And she, and by all appearances, she really believes this. She believes that God has already turned the world upside down. That there actually is justice. And it's not that she'll be the just that she'll be the mother of the Lord, but she believes that all of God's promises throughout history have already been kept. why this text is so challenging. Not only does Mary not see reality, 
but she's this model of trust and faith and joy and obedience way beyond what most of us will even aspire to, much less achieve. We're supposed to be just as faithful as she is. We're supposed to be just as trusting as she is. We're supposed to be just as obedient as she is. And the comparison puts her light years away. Because we're not that naive. So far too often, we just write off the Magnificat as very nice. Good for you, Mary. We know that's how things ought to be. As she sings through this with her relative Elizabeth, we know that's how things ought to be. But we also know we don't believe and trust like that. We figured that was Mary back then, or if nothing else, it was a poetic license by gospel writer Luke. We're here in our reality, in our world, with our problems. And your faith is admirable, Mary, but it just doesn't seem real. And perhaps you're just too young, too idealistic, too naive to get that. This text is a problem because it's just too easy to write it off to ignore it, to make it cute. Or worse, use it as an excuse. One more reason not to take Scripture seriously, because, look, we got the Magnificat as an example of how out of touch, quaint the Bible is. It's mythical. It's fairy tales. Mary's song is yet one more example of how hoping and trusting in this God is just not realistic. It's beautiful. It's inspiring. But it is not real life, right? There are, right now, there are 100, 100 children from Jardín de los Niños with new shoes this Christmas. Some of them probably for the first time getting their own new shoes, who would probably say that Mary's hope is real life. There are a, a few hundred refugees this week who are now safe and living without fear because of the work of Border Servant Corps, who would probably say that Mary's Song of Hope is real life. There are a hundred Afghan re families resettling in Las Cruces right now through the work of Lutheran Family Services, who would say that Mary's Song of Hope is real life. There are multiple households in Mayfield, Kentucky, and surrounding communities, in the midst of the town being absolutely devastated, who have clean water to drink and who have a hot meal and a place to sleep tonight through the work of Lutheran Disaster Response, who would probably say Mary's Song of Hope is real life. There are people because of this congregation who are being comforted in their grief, who are being prayed for in their illnesses, who are being loved in their queerness, who are receiving justice with their dark skin, who would say that Mary's song of hope is real life. There are children at Conley Elementary School who have new clothes and whose parents are comforted knowing that their children will eat lunch this week, 
who would say Mary's song of hope is real life? Dear, sweet, naive little Mary, maybe you know something we don't know. Maybe you do see something we don't see. Maybe you have a perspective that we've become too cynical to have. But beloved people of God, when we look around with care, it's possible to recognize that hope that is very real and very present in our world. It's possible to trust that God is at work among us. It's possible for our souls to magnify the Lord and for our spirits to rejoice in God our Savior. There are reasons for that all around us because the Mighty One has done great things and holy is God's name. So rather than looking at the Magnificat from a distance, standing back and looking at it and seeing it as proof that Scripture shouldn't be taken too seriously, maybe we should step right into the midst, right into the center of the Magnificat so that Scripture can take us seriously. Because as God meets us in Scripture, as God meets us in this song of Mary, this Magnificat, God can change our vision to become like Mary's. God can change our hope to become like Mary's. God can change our trust to become like Mary's. God can change our joy to become like Mary's. In her poverty and her youthful, uh, in her youth and her pregnancy, and the difficulties she's going to be facing from her community and even her family. In the midst of all of that, she sees God's mercy and God's compassion because they are real. That is real life, which means for us, in the midst of our cynicism, skepticism, pessimism, we can see God's mercy and compassion because it is real life. And what's more, like Mary, we can participate with God in filling the hungry with good things. And knowing that the promises God has made from generation to generation are being kept. And that is real life. Amen.
two barren plants, polluted waters, a belted ice pack. We pray especially today for all those suffering the ravages of tornadoes in the Midwest and typhoons in the Philippines. Shape us servants of your creation to bring forth abundant life. Hear us, O God. Righteous God, you bring down ice and lift up the lowly. Strengthen those who seek justice. Bless the work of community organizers, activists, journalists, and all who call our attention to abuses of power. Hear us, O oh God. Compassionate God, you proclaim your love and mercy. Show your loving kindness to the needy parents and those who are pregnant. Comfort any struggling with infertility or lacking resources to care for their children. Be with all who are suffering today in mind, body, and spirit, especially those with families, allowed to be heard on earth. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, you fill the hungry with good food. Bless the peace and hospitality ministries of this congregation, especially the local food pantry and the border service board. Guide us to share your bounty with the hungry, the refugees, and those who live in poverty. Hear us, O oh God. <laughs> Faithful God, you stir up the hearts of those who love you. You give you thanks for those who, like Mary, were courageous in their witness. Especially Sabrina and Cora Peter, the newer of the church. We remember with special love Jane and Steve, Bernice, David, Georgia, Oscar, William. Hear us, O oh God. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord is with you always. Amen. Safely let us share a sign of that ever-present peace with those around us, whether you're here in person or at home.
Together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Blessing for those that are watching uh, remotely that are uh, participating in worship through YouTube. May the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you.